All right, Shalom, giving all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakar Kodash. Double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone that rule exceedingly well. And um, Shalom to the Akim that's pushing his truth in the four winds, in truth and sincerity, man. Right, I just want to get into this video, and um, it's going to be based on this article I've come across. Um, and this was on the uh, sun.co.uk. And the title reads, Eve of Destruction, World War Three will wipe out civilization. Putin warns adding World War Four will be fought with sticks and stones. Now, um, you know, this is um, <laughs> it's a funny statement that he's made, man, because essentially, you know, the place where he's coming from making this statement um, has elements to it which are indeed true, right? World War Three. Will, in will indeed wipe out, you know, civilization as you know it, right? I'll say that. It'll wipe out civilization as you know it, man, because we know through prophecy that World War Three is prophesied of in the scriptures. And World War Three will commence in order to usher in the um, the, the return of, you know, Yahweh Hashem Yahushai, and will also be, um, you know, the the downfall of the so-called white men, who are the biblical Edomites, and it will usher in the kingdom for you Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, right? Who are the true biblical Israelites, according to the the Holy Bible, right? So there's a reason why World War Three is going to commence. Right? First of all, let's go to Revelations 11 and 14. It says here, The second woe is past, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. Now, the word woe means destruction. So now the scripture has said the second destruction is past. So that's talking about World War II. Right? That event has already passed. Millions upon millions of people were massacred in World War II. But that event is past, man. Right? But it says here, But behold, the third woe coming quickly right now that's talking about world war three coming quickly now essentially world war three has already begun on a smaller smaller scale right because you have um you know america putting sanctions on certain countries you know iran uh, russia you know sanctions that's that's really a form of war right when you when you start messing with a country's money and income you've actually declared war upon that country man Right, that's not physical yet. It hasn't this. It hasn't. It hasn't gone to that physical scale yet. But pretty much, it has warranted to now that you've done such a thing, and Putin knows that, man, and all these other nations know that. When you mess with a powerful country's, you know, financial stability or try and cripple their stability by you know ushering in sanctions and restricting them from doing certain things, then you you've already started war. So World War Three has essentially already started. First of all. So it says here also in the title, if 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 there was a World War Four, it would be fought with sticks and stones, which is also true because after World War Three, right, if the Lord wasn't going to intervene, if you have a shy, the one who the world calls Jesus Christ, wasn't to intervene, you know, as it uh, shows you in the second Esther, uh, the the thirteenth chapter, if the Lord wasn't going to intervene in the midst of World War World War Three. Um, then, um, you know, there will be no flesh to be saved. And it actually tells you that in the scriptures, man, because if, if you if you leave Esau to his devices, right, and, and the Lord wasn't going to intervene, then he would kill his own self, right? Because these weapons that he's made that the Lord has given him are so destructive, there can be no life after those weapons, man. You know, there can be no life after those weapons. Once World War Three starts and bombs start dropping, these 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 new weapons they have, you know, they got the Satan too. Something like that when it's dropped, that's massacring millions of people, right? The radius in which some of these um, these ballistic missiles cover and these atomic bombs and all of these artillery they have, the range that they cover is wiping out cities, right? So having a World War Three, it, it shows you how stupid the so-called white man is. They even have a, a thing called a World War Three. Because everyone's technology, all the country's technology is on par with each other, man. So you can't just think you're going to drop your bomb 
and then another country is not going to reply with a response. The response on both sides is going to be detrimental to the population of the world. Right? So, you know, he said a funny statement saying that the World War Four would have to be fought with sticks and bombs. Sticks and stones, man. You know, because there'll be no people left. You, <laughs> you know, so it's a funny statement, but it is indeed true, man. If indeed Yahabash and Yahshai wasn't going to make his return. But since that's not going to happen, we'll disregard that. So he's responded by quoting uh, Albert Einstein. So the quote actually originally came from Albert Einstein. I know not with what happens with World War Three will be fought, but World War Four will be fought with sticks and bones. So even Albert Einstein knew that having such a war would um, would be detrimental to you know so-called mankind. And I said the understanding that a World War, war could end civilization should restrain us from taking extreme steps on the international arena that are highly dangerous for modern civilization. The threat of mutual destruction has always restrained participants of the international arena, prevented adding military powers from making hasty moves, which is true. Like Everyone is kind of walking on eggshells right now because of World War Three. Now, it's something that's inevitable and that will happen. Everyone knows that. But, you know, they're trying their best to suppress it. But really, they're just waiting for the right time, man. But it just shows you how stupid they are thinking that one person can come out on top. You know, concerning World War Three, that is not going to happen, man. There's going to be mass destruction and death, and nothing left to build up if World War Three was to go down, and if the law wasn't going to intervene, right? So um, let's go to the scriptures first of all, man. This is Matthew chapter twelve and verse twenty-six, and it says here, "And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall his kingdom stand, man? Right? How shall his kingdom stand? Because you got Russia, that's an Edomite nation. You got America." full of Edomites too, right? Those are two major Edomite nations that are coming against each other, man. So if Satan be divided against Satan, right, because the Lord has turned their spirit against them, you know, the scriptures also talk about Ezekiel uh, 38, you know, put hooks into the jaws of, of, of Gog and Magog of Russia, right? So they're against, they're against, they're against themselves now, man, right? So how should their kingdom stand? They can't stand, man, because you've got two Edomite nations going at each other's necks, you know, fighting for power. But they're both but they're both of the seed of Eden, man. Of seed of Esau. Right? So their kingdom can't possibly stand. It's like you have, you know, you Negroes, Hispanics, and Native American. Currently we're against each other, man. You know, currently through the curses, we're against each other. That's why we're falling as a nation. Well, that's one of the many reasons we are falling, you know, um on a lower state, because of these curses. But one of the curses is our our, our eyes being evil towards our brother. You know? You got, you know, you got, you know, Judah vexing Ephraim and Ephraim vexing Judah. That's part of the curses too. You know, but the Lord is going to lift up those curses off of our people and place them, which really the Lord is already doing, and place them in the so-called white man. Right? So their kingdom can no longer stand either, man. Right? Because Satan now is now divided against Satan and their kingdom cannot stand, man. This kingdom is shabby, man. The things that be going on in, in Esau's kingdom, you know, it, it's truly crazy. It shows you that they have no they have they have no grip on their on their power anymore, man. It's fading away, it's slipping through their fingers. Their kingdom is spiraling the dream, you know, so to speak, right now, man. And that power, bit by bit, you know, like a like a salt clock, salt timer, is um, you know, coming to the last fragments, man. And that transition of kingdoms is getting ready to uh, take place. Now this is, uh, uh, read that one already, this is Isaiah 9 and 5, for every battle the warrior is, is is with confused noise. Now this is referring to how war and battles were fought in the ancient world. You know, you would have your shield, you would have your sword, you would have the axe, and you would have your, you know, your helmet. You know, so that, that will make a loud racket, or make a, a lot of noise. You know, with the metal clashing together. Like you see them, you know, 300, you see them movies and, you know, those 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 those, those timepiece movies, man, and garments rolled in blood, right? Because it would be very bloody. Because it's very hands-on. Ancient war was very hands-on, man. It's you know man against man. You're not in some aircraft, you know, flying thousands of, thousands of, uh, uh, of of meters in the sky and then dropping a bomb and dipping, right? That's not how war was fought back then because technology was not on that level, right? You were actually in a man's face and you were you know digging that axe in his neck and you were chopping off heads. And you were thrusting men through the stomach, 
you know, chopping off legs and it was very bloody and it was very gory. Right? This even it shows you how men were in, in those times. Men were more rough. Men were more, you know, hands-on. Men were, were proper men back then, man, because that's the kind of things that were going down. Now, you know, men ain't doing that, man. You know, men ain't, you know, if, they, if you fuss someone, if it's with a free and sword, man, a free and slow dagger, then you dip and you're running away. But these were these were these were real men. These were real gory men that were participating in real war, man. Right? And it says in garments rolled in blood, but this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. So this this the end this time is gonna be with burning and fuel of fire, man. That's how the Lord is taking this place out. And he's doing that through, you know, the con intercontinental ballistic missiles, man. Right? And and various other technologies that the so called white man has got. You know, in his artillery, that's going to cause major death and destruction, man. Now, this is this is the Lord that's given them the ability to do that, which I'm going to go into on, on the last scripture. It's Isaiah 54 and 16. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire. So, there's the Lord that has created the smith that, you know, this, the scientist that has, uh, you know, made it possible for Esau to create these, these weapons, man. You know, these weapons of mass destruction. And that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. So this is all for the Lord's agenda, man. This is all for the Lord's glorification, right? Believe it or not, everything that's being done, all these bad things that are being created, is all really just heading towards the prophecy of um, Yahweh Bashem Yahushai making his return. And I have created the waster to destroy. So it's the Lord that has created the waster to destroy, man. Right? And you know. Look, millions of people will die in World War Three, man. Millions upon millions of people will die, right, in that nuclear fire. A lot of our people, two thirds of our people, is gonna get burned up, man, in that in that nuclear fire, and it's gonna run into some some real demonic times, man. You know, because they didn't want to hear the voice and the commandments of Yahweh Shem Shai. But more importantly, it's gonna be the end of Esau's kingdom and his rulership. And it was going to be a transition of kingdoms. And, you know, it's going to usher in our Lord, Yahweh Shai, man. And, you know, we're going to take over and have complete control on earth when that day commences. And Lord willing, that day commences with urgency, man, through the Spirit. And with that, I'll say Shalom.